Hello and welcome to Spooning with me, Mark Wagner. Each week I'm joined here at the Mount Street restaurant by a very special guest where Chef Jamie Shears will be cooking up some spoons of things they say they love and things that they think they hate. Difference is, I'll be feeding them blindfolded. Now, taking on the spoons this week is the undisputed godfather of Italian cookery. My old friend, my mentor, Gennaro Contel. Oh my God, bless you, Mark. This is, thank you very much to invite me. It's such a pleasure, honestly, after so many years. I know. Well, I, we should let people know. We've known each other for 36 years. Stand up and have a look. I'm still the same. Still the same? Yeah, I haven't aged You've just yet. grown a little bit of beer. A bit, gone a bit grey. Fantastic. But, you know. 30? 36 years. 36 years. So... You know, I think it's I think it's important for me to say that as a young man, and on the subject of food and certain other subjects that we may cover, you were a really important influence. You oh, know, thank you. You 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 engendered in me a passion for cooking and for ingredients. You know, I started working with you when I was seventeen, nearly eighteen years old. I remember. And I think it would be fair to say at that stage of my life, I was a little lost. <laughs> Lots lost. Where is Mark in the morning? <laughs> Never. They used to post start at uh, ten o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Where is Mark? Mark, I can't find. I had a Mark. few time. I had a few timekeeping issues. <laughs> yeah, but you're very good. Well, that's very nice of you to say so. But I mean, I there was the odd trust issue. I yes. would say because for most of my time working with you, you only ever let me make polenta biscuits and spinach fritters. That was Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we don't never forget. Oh, bless oh. you! Don't make me cry because what you just said, you know, it it, it not touch me. You know, I feel it. Uh, you know, when you come in, you were a very young boy, and never, never, never forget. You were an extremely nice looking boy as well. Not today with the beard <laughs> and how all the jokes. Uh, you sound like my mother then, now. Then you had that patience. Uh, uh, and I always, many young boys, they come to work at the New Street restaurant, Carlucci, and always look to them. And very rare you find somebody really wanted to learn, and you were one of them. Mm. Between it's, the haze of, haze of whatever I'd consumed the night before, I, you taught me an awful lot. Thank you. And I think, you know, the effect that you've had on a number of people within the industry sort of goes unnoticed. Uh, I mean, obviously, Jamie Oliver sings your praises and you still work together to this day as one of the great influences on him. But I mean, there's been, a, there's been quite a few people have been through your kitchens and through the Neal Street restaurant in Covent Garden, which is now a shoe shop, rather Yes, it is indeed. Oh my goodness me. But we almost went full circle. So. That was my first job in the Neal Street restaurant, right? Fast forward about 20 years, and I opened my first restaurant around the corner in Neal's Yard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take slight umbrage with you now, mm. because I've had the restaurant for over 10 years now. You've never been in. I, I went in a couple of times, but you were not there. <laughs> I know, because you well, work in the Neal's Yard, and your restaurant is right opposite in the corner, wood fire oven. I had this fantastic bit, and I asked the staff, "Where's Mark? Mark don't come today on Wednesday, so I come some <laughs> other time." I should have given you a call. Well, I should look, have given you a call. I, I have brought the mountain to Muhammad today, so I thought what we would do is get you. Hold on, I've got it down here in a special special bag, keeping it warm, and I have brought you. Your own home slice pizza. Oh wow! Today, but in no small part, you are responsible for what's in that box, because you were the first person to teach me how to make bread. Don't make me cry, because at my age now, I'm seventy-five years old, and those days you come along, I remember properly, because I remember when Jamie was there, you know. Uh, Mix was there as well, Tim was there. But between all those young boys, I saw young girls yeah. as well. You know, I 
choose to myself which one that really after give some of my experience. You didn't know, but I was trying to give you the well, things I knew. You know, mine is only limited because I was said to myself, I've got so much experience, let's give it to somebody. But what, you you always did, what you always did was made it fun. You know, it was fun. Oh, my God. Oh, it's a little God. bit. Let, let's move this. It's got a little bit crushed in transit, this. But there we go. I thought, given 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 that you are Italian, I would keep it simple with just a margarita. Because, as they say, if you can't make a margarita, you shouldn't be making pizza. pizza. But thank you very much for these tributes. Then, you know, you make it. No, pizza. Pizza is part of Italy. Well, it's international all mm. over the world. But from you, that you just said to me, you know, you taught me how to make bread. Bread is flour, water, and yeast. And then you make a pizza. That is an attribute. Now, obviously we do this, but there's certain things I do that you would never agree with. Like, for example, pineapple on a pizza. <laughs> Look, I'll have you know. I never showed you how to do pineapple in the <laughs> No, place. I know you didn't. But you see, the then thing you is. Then you were bringing a pineapple in the restaurant. <laughs> but, but the thing is, because I'm not Italian, I'm not held to any rules. I can put whatever I like on a pizza. Yeah, you can, yes. Yeah. You won't eat it. No, for sure. <laughs> but it's like Angela Hartner yeah. thinks I'm a lunatic because there's one pizza that we put coriander on. I don't know. I actually had a pizza once with a coriander on top. Yeah. That was quite all right. Yeah, it's nice. But so when we first opened Home Slice, quite early on, about six weeks in, the Evening Standard came in and they did a review. And it was our duck breast with Szechuan roasted pineapple that got us the, got us the, got us the big review and changed the face of the business. So... I, I, I have a soft spot for pineapple because it, <laughs> it made home slice, whereas you would hate the idea of it. Yes. What, yeah, else, what else do you think doesn't belong on a pizza? Well, has, well, the pizza in Italy, the truly Neapolitan pizza, they only have four pizza. One is quattro stagione, is four season. The reason why, because you use everything of four season. We start from spring, Summer, autumn, and winter. You know, I like autumn because there was the mushrooms mm. that are like that. Spring, whatever it grows in springs, and then you put also aubergines on top, which is for the summer, so and so. That is in a classic quattro stagione. Each session has got a little bit of everything, but you can mix. Another one is marinara. Marinara is in a simple pizza, very, very simple pizza which inside there it is tomato, few capers, olives, and anchovies, and of course, oregano goes inside there. Now we come to the classic, la regina margherita. Why you call them a margherita? The story is, the million story, <laughs> the story is that this baker made this kind of a pizza, and uh, it was very popular in the regions of Naples, just in Naples, I said, oh, wow, you know, uh, everybody eating, and the queen, Margherita, wanted to know and taste it. So they called this baker, and he made this pizza, and she loved it. And he said, what's he called this pizza? He said, your majesty, this pizza is dedicated to you, and it's called Margherita. And if you can't make it, you should make it. Are you gonna try my Margherita? Of course, and so I'm going to pick up the pizza, we do like a portfolio, so portfolio. Portfolio. It's like a wallet, yeah. which is in yeah. four. When you have all the one yeah. and we, three, for we one. call we call it the home slice fold. No, so flow. And then here he goes. You put him a line that can I? Now tell me, because all the ingredients in that actually, this one, they all come from Italy. Mm. Mm. Samazano tomatoes, fio di latte from Naples. Fio di latte, caputo which is flour. Mild, uh, caputo flour, I love it. It's not very Neapolitan, only the water. Yeah. yeah, I haven't got the Neapolitan water. I've only got London water. I saw it's good. Yeah. Do you it, know what? Put it through a filter, you know it's what? fine. No, because Neapolitan water is not very excellent. <laughs> That's why I make a good pizza. 
Mm. How, how do we score? What what have we got out of 10? What are you going to score a home slice? Can Richard finish? Oh, sorry. Yes. Thank it, you. Because he's got to get to the crust, you see. It's good dough, right? Terrific. You cook them raw. This, this, you see, because she cooks well, this is very important. Because if I cut these little bits, you can see it's cooked mm -hmm. inside. Yeah. I mean, Johnny's going to be upset because you're tearing it apart now and he's got his eyes on it for later. Mm. So we pass muster. I just love it. Well, mm. th this is the first time I've been with you when you've eaten my pizza. That, you see that? We ship in twice a week from Naples, that proper feel of the lap. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I enjoy when I go food. I shut up. It's the only time I shut up. Because I enjoy. Do you know what? You bake this one in the oven, it's quite big. You done it with quite an oven because I've been inside your place. Oh, Take him out, me. put him inside the top of the board. Pizza is sherry. Pizza is so important. Pizza is family. It's warm. It's sherry. It's nation. Pizza is everything. Pizza is everything. Pizza is affordable to everyone. What's the question? Pizza is the answer. Pizza the the world, all the world supposed to eat the pizza. And you choose the right. We've talked a little bit about my early life yeah. in food because it was mainly with you. But what about yours? Don't make me cry. What about yours? Because you, you, start, you started in kitchens at what, eight? Let me tell you a little story. I was born in a small village <clears throat> of Amalfi Coast. I was born right 30 meters above the sea. Can you imagine there the houses most is all on the sea? Uh, my father said that was very rough evening because the sea was was rough. But then born 30 meters above the sea, the sea, it was my swimming pool. If you ask me when you learn how to, to swim, I always have, I can't remember. We have a mountains at the back. The mountains it was my back garden. We have a small village. This is was my playground where I can learn at the smell, you know, the the, the 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 season that they come along. So I was very lucky. But like me, thousand other young boy like me, they're born in that village. Some of them born hundred meter away, some thirty meter away, and everything was about food. My family was everything about food. When we all seated on the table, we used to eat something on the table and the discussion was where it come from said, oh yes it is very good well is the farm up the road the one is got to the lamb or the chicken the one with the lovely face oh he's such a good boy such a lovely man oh yeah if he's such a lovely man such a good person everything he produced tasting good yeah. yeah i was at the age of 10 12 must have been this age. We had a linen shop. So linen shop, we used to sell that shop linen. Cloth to make suit, linen for the table. My mother used to be inside the shop. And my father used to go around on heels uh, because he had to see customers. Because customers don't pay, you know, cash or anything. He used to buy weekly or monthly. So I went with him and halfway he said, you know what? I think you better stay in a village, next village, which is called Maiori, Minore, where I was born, Maiori was born. Stay with my friend uh, Alfonso, which has restaurants. I, you know, I didn't, didn't understand much. I went inside the restaurant, and there he goes, this beautiful chef, Alfonso, bless him. You know, I stayed with him, and my father said, I'll pick him up this afternoon. All happy, you know, stay with him. He did pick me up in the afternoon. And that was three years later. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that was three years later. Let me tell you why. Because I liked so much what he was doing. And every time I have to escape <clears throat> from school, school played a very little part uh, for me. You know, I love it. And my job, it was simple, you know, cleaning around and look at the chef or their cooking. You know, but the family was so nice. But then I started to 
to understand a little bit more. So they everything have to be fresh. If there was a chicken, I tell you, this is what I'm telling you. So somebody ordered a chicken. Alfonso, the chef, you said, Gennarino! Run in the yard, grabbing a chicken, pull it. No, show me out. Well, give his mind. Mm. There was always hot water. Put them inside hot water. People, are, they're waiting. You know, they love to wait in because they pre-order. Most of the time they pre-order. So unplug it and everything the chicken had never thrown away anything at all. Bring to the chef. And after there was a feather on it, I make you eat that up, feather. You know, in a nice way. And this is was with the rabbit. The only thing I didn't want to touch it was the lamb. And all the fresh fruit and vegetables comes along. And he was to everything a local way of cooking. But what actually was teaching me, it was teach me the love and the passion, the flavor of food. If you have an aubergines, you have to taste an aubergines. If you have an gorget, you have to taste an gorget. If you have a chicken, you have to taste a farm. You have to have that flavor of the nature, the herb. All these things used to tell me all the time. So slowly, slowly, I cooked little things. And three years later, after I was the biggest chef in the world, <laughs> instead I was the, the biggest rubbish, <laughs> you know, I pump on my head. And from there, you're moving along, you become 16, you go work in many restaurants, you travel a little bit uh, uh, the south of Italy, then you move up and so and so and so. And then I come in England. And yeah, 19, I, 1969. 1969. That was a job because you need a permit in those days. So they, they got me a job for fish and chips, eight pounds a week. So I walked inside the fish and chips. That's not made. dissimilar to what I used to get paid at your restaurant. Didn't he? Yeah, I think it was about. I thought he was so screwed. I think, that much I, 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 what was it? It was 11,000 pounds a year. 11,000, well, it's more than that. So I used yeah. to give eight pound a week, it's different. <laughs> uh, inflation? Inflation, oh, you're right, inflation. <laughs> and I used to smell, it was, I said, I can't work inside. Yeah, I, I can cook, but that was the permit you have to have. Uh, so I stayed there, and, but the fish was nice coming in. And sometime there was cod coming in, so we used to clean. It was easy for me because I, you knew, I knew how to do it. But, you know, there was people there, they were fish and chips, plus they were a tea. And then they put the fish and chips in butter and they fried the chips. I like to cut so many chips under the machine. There was a machine which you, you clean them as well, the potato, pull it. I didn't stay very long. But I could not believe, it. how can you have a fish, chips, fried in the butter and drinking a tea? I mean, it's an English classic. Fish and chips with a cup of tea. Do you know what now on the fish and chips? I will give them a five for Michelin star because I do love it, the fish and chips. And I drink tea on the fish and chips. You see, you've been, you've been anglicised. Anglicised is incredible. I just love it. I have to have at least once a month. So let's go a little bit forward to where, when you ended up at the Neal Street restaurant with Antonio Carluccio. But Which the, started a friendship that lasted how many years? Oh, well, all together, I missed it. Oh, do you know what? Now I missed him so much. Yes, when I left it, because uh, Antonio Priscilla was uh, was on a open at, you know, other restaurant. They said, Gennaro, we done a thing. They're going to contract for uh, for um, this was franchise. When, this is when, when they were I opening left, all the, the Carluccio's Then I left and I opened up a restaurant. Passione. Passione. I was very lucky. and uh, I loved that, that restaurant. I loved, I, very, I know you used to come down. I'll never forget. One of my favourite things was coming down into the kitchen between service and we'd just sit there and you'd always cook. You'd never let anyone leave that kitchen not no. being fed. Yeah, well, I, I am a cook. It's the only way to make people up a cooking food for them. Uh, it was so successful restaurants, you know, simple food. And, uh, and, I that, was, and that's, that's when you had your first book as well. Your first book, Passione, which was, was Passione. 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 It was my first book, Passione. And how, I, many, how many books have you had now? <laughs> There's been quite, quite a few. few. 
It takes one and a half years to do a book. It's not uh, you do one after the other. Books always come one after the other. You know, last, my last book, Cucina, it took one and a half years. Mm. And the other one now, Verdure, which you have mm. a copy, it took another half, one and a half years. Because this is the new book. It is Verdure. the new book. And what I like about the way you've set this out is you've gone on the colour of the vegetables. So it's all about vegetables. Yes. And you've gone on the colour of the vegetables. It is indeed, yes. What well, very important, the colours. So, you know, you start with green. Yeah. Then go to red. Yeah. Then we go to purple. Yeah. And then... Oh, well, no, I have I to look at the yellow as well. There is there. There's yellow. Yellow vegetables. All sorts of different vegetables. A lovely drain. Do you um, do all those pictures yourself? Can you see? No, you've got it open on a pack. There we go. There we go. There's a lovely piece. Look, they, they're definitely your hands. You're sure? You wouldn't... Who else would have hands like that? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> But it is, it, it, it is, it, a, it is a beautiful book. book. Well, also on the book, if you read it, this one, yes. is Jamie. Yeah. Okay. And look, can you read underneath as well? Stanley Tucci. Such a wonderful, lovely. timely book. And that's what I thought as well. You know, it's that f we're in a time where we're being told to eat more vegetables. Yeah. You eat more vegetables. Eat more vegetables. Eat less, eat less red meat. All that kind of thing. But that actually is the Italian diet anyway. <laughs> it's like it's like that people are talking like they've reinvented the wheel. The Italians have been eating like that for years. I'm so pleased that you said that. Very, very pleased. Uh, especially, well, everywhere in Italy, but especially in, in Campania, uh, south of Italy, uh, where I come from, they used to call us leaves eater because that's what you used to eat, vegetable, meat. It was expensive. Chicken. Oh my goodness me. I remember my father, we used to go hunting with my father, and every time he shot at something, uh, it was a, a rabbit, or perhaps it was an, a pheasant, kind of. The pheasant on the table, we had to share it between 25 people. <laughs> you know, this is how Ray was the meat. My father always, he was the best to shoot wild boar, and always come along with an excuse that a dog ran away, he missed it. He didn't even try. That, that was lovely. That was lovely. But vegetable, we do eat a lot of vegetable. 80% uh, is vegetable that we eat mm. because we want to taste season of a vegetable. And the broccolis come out. Let's taste the broccoli. Remember the, so many different ways you can do it. If you go in, uh, in uh, this time of the year, which is now, is February, if you go in any market, in any way in Italy, what you find is so abundant everywhere is artichoke. But we've moved away from that seasonality. Yes. You know, you walk into a supermarket, you can get asparagus year round. How terrible. You know, what I love about this book, though, is again, and all your books is, it's never complex. It's always no. simple. And it, but it always has which was the name of your first restaurant, Passione, it has the passion in it. And you've always been able to instill that passion through working with you, through the restaurants that you had, through the books that you write. When you were that little boy swimming in the sea off the Amalfi Coast, did you ever imagine your life would end up where it is now? As the, as, as the sort of go-to for a lot of people, you know, very... People of note uh, on the subject of Italian food. The fact that on the front of your book, you've got Jamie Oliver and Stanley Tucci saying, it's basically a fantastic book. I consider myself uh, just a normal person. You know, why I'm doing all this? A lot I have to Jamie, a lot of this. I, Jamie, because he does whatever he goes, you know, he mentioned me. Jamie played a big part, actually one of the biggest part. Uh, but I think it's paying it forward because, like me, you influenced Jamie enormously as a young man. I just give him, a, I just give him some of my passions. You know, I every person in the world. There's so many beautiful person around the world, and I want to meet them all. And what I have, I cannot bring with me. So when I do find a person, they're really interested. Let's give him everything. Mm. But most of everything, you have to give him a passion. You don't have to bang on it. Just, just give them what you have. 
transport your feeling, your heart in the person. Give them a lot of love. And they will repay you back. Not because I'm going to be repaid back. Mm. You already repaid me back now after so many years to be on your program. Come on. Right. And you said to those beautiful words, I'm here because of you. No money in the world can actually repay me for that. I'm not after my age. I'm, I'm not after. But, you know, like anyone, you've had your ups and downs in life. Everybody, and, and yeah. things have changed. You know, the the restaurant closed. You then went to work with Jamie. You you were a massive influence on all the Jamie's Italian restaurants and and on 15 that he did and all the training for all those young people there. And now that you sit back and look at it all, I mean, I'm not saying you're at the end, let's be clear. But now that you sit back and look at it all, do you think I'm lucky or do you think, yeah, this was part of the design? No, it was not part of the design. I'm just lucky. Yeah. It just come up to come up. I never, I asked this question, as I said this morning, I realized a little bit more. Uh, I only wanted to work and I want to give them away what I had, but also learning at the same time. Mm. And I do learn it now as well in different but, ways. But that's a very Italian thing, to pass on knowledge around food, you have around to. what's important, you have to. around family, around the fact that sitting at a table and eating together is so important. Very important. And, you know, you have quite a large family yourself now. They're yeah. all getting a bit older now. I remember them when they were oh, tiny, bless tiny, you. tiny. Yeah. And, you know, they're now 20 and whatever, which then makes me feel old. Well, also I have a, also I have a, uh, also I have a boy of a 36. I also I have another one of a 14. Of a, also yeah. I have another well, I mean, girl. You, you well, got... I've got six. Included Jamie as seven and included you. <laughs> I'd just like to say there's no DNA shared other than you the passion for food. Any passion on air. Well, <laughs> I, you know, always we usually say when we do love somebody else, child, you know, this is my son without the sins. Hmm. No, You're one of them. Definitely. One way or the other, we always and, meet touch. You know, and nothing gives me greater pride than you are part of my food DNA. It just, it, it's, it's something that I, you know, the fact that I met you when I did and the effect that you had, I, you know, I can get quite emotional thinking about that. Don't let me cry. Carry on, let's well, do it all let's, this way. Let's change the subject. Then. Thank you. Because Italian food is one thing, yeah. right? But you have a passion for something else, quite un-Italian, which is, I've got it down here. Hold on one second. Now, Johnny, the producer, went to great lengths to get this. He went all the way to Radlett. Oh, my God. Now, tell us what we've got in front of us there. What? We have soaked beef bagels we, with, the, with the mustard inside. Didn't he put any cream inside? No, it's not. Oh, gosh. It's got all those gherkins, which are that. So well preserved. I usually go quite often there with my friend, the power. So this this is Nosha's restaurant in Radley. Yes, it is indeed. Now, why do you why do you end up having as an Italian through and through, when you could be eating any amount of delicious Italian food that you end up at a salt salt beef bagel? Well, it, it is because beyond the salt beef bagel, beyond the salt beef. There is an elaboration, you know, they preserve the meat, the way they're cooking. And when they actually, they put all the ingredients with mustard, the gherkins, the creams inside. Uh, by the way, I usually have one is tossed it. Yeah. Uh, and, and also in the sandwiches, you know, I can see the culture behind. But never mind about the culture, it tasted good. And I love it because in Italy we do have as well what we do with pork, this is beef. We have all the leftover of a pork, which we preserve them in salt, and then we put them in water to, for a day to remove all the salt, and then we boil it. And when it boils, it tastes exactly the same like the salted so beef. It reminds, it, it reminds it remind you me of it. Well, easily. Now, the other weird thing that you have with this is a Greek salad, according to the man at Nosh's. I love it. 
Palau. So we're going all over the place all over now. The, I love Greece. I love lovely food. Oh, my God. The Greeks do a fantastic food. But I said that this one, instead of use ordinary olive oil or perhaps a little kind of oil, they should use some olive oil. No, doesn't bottle of thing, but I need a bit extra olive oil. And I do eat it. Oh, gosh. Well, and do you know what? I have to tell you something. I'm, I nearly stop. I will stop if you don't, please, if you hear this program one day. Because every time I go there, I try to get up the table. I try to pay. I said, there is no bill for you. And I love it so much. Then, you know, once every other week, me and Pablo, we go there. And, and always look around if he's there or not. But he's not there. So I said, good, I'm saving that. And then how did the blue? The cashier says, sorry. So what you're saying is you've never paid for one Can of these? I, yes, or I think also only well, once. I'm, I'm glad we're keeping up the tradition. So we've come to God, that. my God. Bless you, David. Uh, Adam, I beg your pardon. I always call him Adam. Bless you, Simon, with this beautiful, I have to say, the lovely. Because so now at the you, moment. If, if you want to experience these, noshers in Radlett. They are the best salt beef bagels in, it in is. your opinion. Okay. Also salmon. Yeah. They're, well, they're we've, smoke. we've got you a packet of salmon as well. There's, there's always plenty to take home. There's already plenty. Now, talk to me about this honey. Jesus. You've, had, a, you've had an influence on this honey, haven't this you? Yes, indeed. Uh, this is the best honey ever, ever taste. This coriander, can you imagine? You know, they have a field full of coriander and they have this, all this beehive. Because I've never it's seen sun. coriander honey. Well, you try, it's so good. So tell me the story, Louisa's honey. Louisa is the wife of a Simon. Who, who uh, owns Noshers? No, Noshers is Adam, the brother right. of a Simon. Right. And, and, uh, so there is a family connection. Uh, it's, no, it's all there, mother and father, there is the lot. And Cos is the son, there's got two small children that they quite often call me, you know, that many times they come home when I'm filming. Uh, you know, they're there, they're good. And that they ask me, said, if I want to endorse for a little while the sunny. I said, okay, let's taste it. And I tasted it. They got five, six, and maybe more different honey. They come from Italy. Uh, and I tasted it and I couldn't believe how good it is. And each one is different. And so I said, okay, so uh, we went uh, to, I believe, Excel, the first one. They got in touch with my agency and I said, okay, so and so and so. He's got, uh, Sam has got a cab company, which is called the cabs. Everything, every time I want to travel anywhere, catch him. A plane, he always so, sending me a car. So hold on a second. You don't pay for your cabs either? No. <laughs> <laughs> you see, but he's offering who, me a, a car. Know, knowing how to cook and having a, having passion for food has been very kind in return, hasn't it? Yes, I, I know. It, you don't it, pay for your bagels. But, uh, you don't pay for your cabs. No, you don't, don't pay for your honey. Three o'clock. When was the last morning. time you paid for a meal? Well, I do pay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, is the Ritz Hotel. <laughs> they said, you can have a coffee. Yeah. No, I said, Free no. coffee in the Ritz this morning. <laughs> oh, God. No, no, I haven't taken it yet. So I went there, it was the coffee. I said, I'm coming back. Oh, so go back, it's free coffee later. Oh, God bless you. He got lovely. Oh, God bless me. Now, Simon we've come Adam. to that time in proceedings where I am going to ask you, Again, what? you, what to you to don the blindfold. It's time for you to experience the food that we have prepared for you. So, if you pop that on. Do you know when you're are blunt? Gonna, I, I'm gonna feed you the first spoon. Here's the first spoon. Now, as I said, these are based on the answers to your questionnaire that you had. I'm gonna feed you. I need you to open wide. Jamie Shears, the chef downstairs, a bit wider. There we go. Tell me what you've got there. Describe a potato? Texture. the textures, the flavors. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any time today would be good with an with a description. <laughs> it tastes like a potato. Yeah, but any other flavors. 
It, I'm going to give you a clue. It's a very important Italian dish, this. <laughs> he doesn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Take the blindfold off. Oh, this isn't going to go down well with Jamie, the chef. This is his potato gnocchi with Who parmesan. Yeah, with parmesan and olive oil and butter and sage and all these things. Yeah. Yeah. I you didn't, you didn't like it, did you? No. <laughs> but lucky now because I five six because I what, was... what worries me is that's your nice spoon. <laughs> <laughs> very I mean, difficult. It's very difficult. Can you do it again? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Listen, I love it. There you, is a, well, I was right to say a potato, yeah. but it was too big for the... Oh, oh gosh, bless you. Listen, I'm sorry, Jamie. It turns out your gnocchi needs work. Maybe he'll give you a recipe. Right. No, that is very good. <laughs> By the way, you gave it to me. And no, I, no. Open it on my... <laughs> now, listen, talking of disasters, as we find ourselves in one now, there was one time that you and Antonio got the opportunity to present Saturday Kitchen. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which, oh unbeknownst to you, God. is one of the great moments of comedy ever on television. Because, I mean, not only did the viewers at home have no idea what was going on, neither did you two. <laughs> I was... We, we went there on a Friday to rehearsal. And, um, so this was after James had left. They were trying out new people new to people. present it. You were the two greedy Italians at the time. And Jamie came along as well. <laughs> and, that, it still didn't help. Uh, you know, uh, it, uh, well, uh, it was the trouble to read the monitor because you have a monitor on front of you and you read it. Yeah, the uh, auto cue. Uh, I, I was reading and uh, also... <laughs> not, and not, from, not from the viewer's point no, of view, you and, weren't uh, reading and it. And then I remember one one time, so you go your line, you read, hello, other people, you know, now we're going to cook this, this and this, and you will, Antonio, it was, it was like that. I went, <clears throat> read your feet, you don't do that. You know, you don't push me. And then, and then, and then. <laughs> at the end, we, we don't know what we were cooking. I had a cue in my ear, you know. I, you know, I won't tell you what I say. You know, just to remove once gone from and away the six hundred pounds. Did you two forget it was live? Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. Honestly, at the end of which, I have do to it. say, if you haven't seen this, it is available on YouTube, and you really should watch it because it is some of the greatest television ever made, not deliberately. But some of the greatest television ever made. Everybody liked it. Everybody <laughs> laughed it. Everybody, even the cameraman was still there. If you watch a program, you can see it. They're shaking. And I, you see, the trouble is because I also had to cook Antonio uh, uh, food because you always have to give him hands. And also, you, you, you go slot so quick. But, you know, when you do yourself those slot, you rehearsal and that is fantastic. Uh, but then, when you actually have to look to look after somebody else as well, they didn't actually come up properly. But at the end, I looked myself and I looked at Tony, which he didn't understand why I was looking at him. And Jamie couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> I stopped laughing. I said, "You know what? Well, let it go. Whatever they want to do it, <laughs> we done it." No, it was definitely free form. It, it was is, definitely free form. I never forget. It was a Matt Matt Abbott, which is present. Lovely way. Matt. Matt, we've, I we've love had him on spooning. We, I love Matt. Matt, 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 what a lovely man. And uh, so he takes in after the show the best Saturday entertainer oh, ever. It was phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I often get, I often we didn't go know back what we would do it. it, honestly. We didn't <laughs> know what we would do it. Not, not too greedy Italians, too clueless too Italians. <laughs> we, you know, I remember I had to cook uh, at something. Uh, for Jamie, which, which he didn't like it, but uh, ask him. So, Somewhat uh, similar to our gnocchi. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I had to do chicken legs, you know, chicken, you yeah. know, and so I got this beautiful chicken leg. Uh, and then I had to blanch, and then I had to cook in tomato sauce and cook with pasta and then present it to Jamie. He had some, he loved it. Well, uh, uh, 
And then he was looking like that. And, uh, and instead of going to give him a two legs or three legs, I must have given him about 10. He played, went up like that. And as soon as he leave, went, eh. <laughs> but I loved it. We, we were funny. Uh, uh, Antonio, the best one, when he was almost not fall asleep. I don't know how he managed. <laughs> if you watch, he goes like that. And uh, your turn reading that. Uh, he went like that. <laughs> not very nice. <laughs> uh, but, but, but it was all but, right. But weirdly, you never got asked to do it again. No. Oh, yeah, well. No, no. Yeah, no, no. We've been there many times. I'm not yeah. to ask her to no, present. No, not to present it again. I'm part of the furniture I've been doing for so many years, uh, not just when the Captain's Television had, also before. Uh, I think it was 2000 when the first Danny and done with Drake, you know, and uh, we, we had a big studio in Wembley and uh, took all day, because you have to do three course meals, took all day to do it. And uh, I never forget, I had to cook something with a wild rocket and Daddy didn't have a wild rocket. I said, wait a minute, I said, don't panic. Just I went outside and <laughs> there was wild rocket growing everywhere. Well, that's that's one of the things that I love about you is you can be driving down a road with you <laughs> and you'll suddenly just pull. It could be on a dual carriageway. You'll pull the car over and get out and you'll be picking what looks to, like most people weeds off the side of the road. You're well, delicious. We'll go home and eat these. Right? So we're now at the point which I'm approaching with a little bit of trepidation where I'm going to get you to put on the blindfold again. Oh. And we have your I love it, you can, second anyway. and final spoon. Open wide. What have we got there? <laughs> oh, Salty it's been oyster. It's oyster. What have you got against oysters? Okay. They're still alive. You have to swallow. Sorry. <laughs> Can I take him off? Yes. Sugar. We did a lovely oyster there with a Vietnamese ah, dressing for you. It's the texture. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. yeah. Let's get rid of that. There we go. I'm going to get one. So what you're saying is you wouldn't want the second spoon. No, thank you. So we, whether it was your nice spoon or your challenging spoon, you don't want a second spoon of either of them, do you? No, well, I will have the other. Oh, no, the gnocchi, yes, I will have it. But it's a... I know I tasted the potato, it is so important that a gnocchi taste of a potato, but I was not sure what kind of a potato it was. I thought you put something inside, but I, you know, when you present it in a plate with the sauce around, and you're not blindfolded, those are delicious. But this one, you know, you're going to play the like that, 12 oyster, we squeeze a bit of lemon, don't chew it, swallow, boom. After that life, you still do, bop, bop, bop. I love oyster, a nice way I cook. Lovely spaghetti with oyster, I will eat it. Lovely, put them in breadcrumb, fry them, put them so in you bread. So you, what you're saying is you can't eat a raw oyster. No, no, no has way. to be cooked. After, I don't mind the well, I think I think you've proven that you can't eat a raw oyster because you're one of the few people who've actually spat the spoon out and not finished it. Yeah, well, you can't. It's the texture, it's, it's it's, it's on me, uh, yeah. and I love oyster. We we'll eat oyster cooked, but not raw. Well, I'm sorry we've been unable to change your mind. Yeah, <laughs> but God, it's... what what do you put them inside? Vinegar, no, chili, a, v pasta, Vietnam, 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 there's Vietnam. a Vietnamese dressing. No. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Paolo, we damned, don't. damned with faint praise Paolo, there. let's change where we're going to go for lunch today. No Vietnamese, let's go Chinese, all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm sorry we've uh, let you down on your second spoon, <laughs> but it's been such a pleasure to have you here today. And your new book is a joy. Thank you, Mo. And I shall be enjoying cooking that later on this week. The family will be having something out of that. But it just remains to say thank you for everything. And Don't thank you for being cry. here today. Don't make me cry. And long may you be with us, teaching us and sharing your passion with us. A massive thank you to Gennaro. His book, 
I recommend you buy it. Literally a lifetime's worth of thanks to Gennaro for taking part today. His new book, Verdura, is out now to buy. That is it for Spooning for this week, but we will have another special guest next week where they will be trying something they think they love and something they think they hate. As ever, a huge thanks to Jamie Shears and the team here at the Mount Street Restaurant. If you like what we're doing at Spooning, make sure you follow Spooning with Mark Wogan across all your social media channels. You can also find us on YouTube. And if you like our podcast, you can find us on all the platforms. Make sure you subscribe. And if you like it, leave us a five-star review. Until next week, stay beautiful.